What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this episode of Monday Night Raw. Um, they have been progressing some things heading into WrestleMania. Some storylines are starting to uh, further progress, and it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out. Play out. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the Monday Night Raw stream on YouTube and Twitch. We always enjoy your uh, your guys' company, and uh, looking forward to seeing what happens on SmackDown as well this week. So let's get right into it. Talk about the the most important stuff that happened on the show. So we're going to get into the whole drew mcintyre and seth rollins segment once again seth rollins and drew mcintyre their promo segments have been just top notch for the past few weeks damn near a few months now they've been killing it every time they have a microphone in their hand they are killing it so drew comes out there obviously the winner of the men's elimination chamber this year he comes out there with this you know smug smile you know he's feeling good he's out here high-fiving people on, on the entrance ramp it's like he's a good guy he truly believes he is a good guy but he really isn't so he comes out there and he starts off the promo with the we did it guys like a baby face would we did it guys we we finally achieved the goal man we I mean, we did it and it was all because of you guys for praying for this moment and i i'm i'm just enjoying this because he's bringing that back up everyone prayed for him to win so he's like i, I want to thank you guys for praying for me to win this match we did it we're going to wrestlemania to face seth rollins and to win the world heavyweight championship so i'm like okay i'm here now for the troll i'm here for him to you know really egg this up like he's really the good guy he's the hero in the story right but then he started to get a little bit serious. He was like, you know what? I got to get serious with you guys. I got some unfortunate news in the match. I ended up getting injured. I ended up getting one of my eardrums ruptured. Um, and it was pretty painful. And the doctors were saying that I shouldn't be going to WrestleMania. I may not be able to go to WrestleMania. And I told the doctors, and this is when I knew he was about to be on some bullshit. I told the doctors, who do you think I am? CM Punk? I'm going to WrestleMania. <laughs> He's still talking trash about CM Punk. And then he sat down in the middle of the ring like CM Punk would do cross-legged. And he sat down. He's delivering his promo. And I'm like, bro, this is, this is fucking great. He's like, you know, CM Punk, I, I thought about you. I thought about you because I know this was supposed to be your moment which in actuality i think behind the scenes it technically was supposed to be cm punk moment he's like i thought about you afterwards and you know what i know you're straight edge so i i took an extra extra uh drink just for you you know what i'm saying because i know you wish it could have been you in this position <laughs> but he's like enough of all that let's go ahead and get seth rollins out here right now so seth rollins comes out there and he's he's doing this little little stick that he does but when seth rollins gets serious when he takes off the shades and stop acting goofy he delivers such a great promo and it's very believable but you gotta get to <laughs> to the serious part so he, he's kind of just joking around having a good time like he normally does with the crowd doing the whoa whoa you know he's just having a good time and drew um basically says look i'm 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 looking forward to our match i'm looking forward to you know you know tearing down the house at wrestlemania with you but you know i i need you at a hundred percent you know your knee is kind of banged up your back is kind of banged up and i have an issue with you because right now you're running around with this whole bloodline situation cody situation and trying to help cody and stuff like that when you're not even at 100%, and I don't want them getting involved in my, in our match and then my win be tainted against you, which is a very interesting thing that he's brought up. And essentially, he's saying, you keep messing with the bloodline, they're going to interfere in our match, and then my win is going to be tainted. My win's going to have an asterisk because you kept messing with them. <clears throat> and I like I like that, that angle of how he was approaching 
this situation. He's like, I don't give a damn about what happens on SmackDown. I don't care about that. But I care about you being at 100% so I can face you at 100%. I don't need you messing with their affairs. And then once Seth took off the glasses, he was like, yeah, you know, congrats to you. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing how, you know, things play out <clears throat> are going, you know, going forward into WrestleMania and looking forward to facing you again. But I need you to understand this. This needs to happen. He started talking about he's been selfish for a majority of his career. And then he had his daughter. And then he started to realize that there's other things more important than just championships and stuff like that. You know, his family, doing this for his family, making sure his family can be proud, his daughter can be proud. And he's like, this is bigger than just me and you. This is all about the WWE as a whole. You know, like, I'm not worried about my, you know, my back and my knee when it comes to this situation because we have to stop them. You know better than anybody else what the bloodline can do. Say, for example, they do take me out. And then you do win. You have an easy night at WrestleMania. You beat me, right? Who's to say they don't come after you afterwards? What's going to stop them? But if we put it into the bloodline right now, this year, then we don't ever have to worry about this ever again. And I like that what he said to him. He said, what you're saying could be true. But what if you're wrong? Wrong. What if my back does hold up? What if my knee does hold up? What if we actually do take down the bloodline? Then what? Very interesting promo. I I definitely in love what they what what they were doing to have with this back and forth. Drew's concerned. He's like, you're gonna get the bloodline involved in my situation with you, and you should just leave them alone. But Seth is like, well, no, because if we just leave it alone, we're going to be in the same situation. And then who's to say they don't come after you? Then what are you going to do? And I love on commentary after the segment, I love on commentary where Michael Cole and, uh, and um, Pat McAfee have brought up the fact that, well, just last week, the bloodline just helped you. So now all of a sudden you you don't want them to be in part involved in anything that you got going on. But literally, the bloodline is the reason why you beat Cody. So what's going on here, Drew? How do you really feel? So I thought that was a very great segment. Love what they're doing here. Very interested to see how things will play out going forward. And then we have another segment backstage where Drew encounters jay jay's having an interview talking about what happened last week or whatever and then he sees drew drew comes up to him he was like look i don't want no problems I, I just wanted to let you know we need to have this conversation i understand what you're going through I, I really do and i just want you to know that you deserve this <laughs> drew is such a fucking hater bro and i love it Jay proceeds to throw his glasses and they start brawling back and forth. I was all for it. And now we have a match with them again next week on Raw. It's going to be very interesting to see who's going to win and who's going to lose that match. But love what was going on there. That that was a nice little exchange. He's like, you deserve this. And Jay's like, all right, fuck it. And we, they just started fighting. Love it, love it, love it, man. So let's get to the main event of the night but before that happened uh grayson waller and austin theory were doing an interview and while they're having an interview you can see paul Heyman was talking on the phone he looked at grayson waller and then he walked off in the background so he knew something was up and then uh, during the interview, Grayson Waller is talking about what happened at, uh, in Australia and how Austin Theory got beat up or uh, whatnot and how uh, Grayson was trying to help him, but he wasn't able to help him. And you can see Austin look at him like, huh, you sure about that? Like, that was like, you tried to help me. No, you didn't. So they're, they're teasing some dissension there. You thought it was going to potentially show its face, but it does a little bit in the match between Cody and Grayson. So they have their match. And Austin gets involved, gets on the on the uh, tur uh not turnbuckle on the uh, apron, trying to distract Cody. And Cody ends up hitting a dive 
on to Austin Theory onto the announce table. And then Cody gets back into the ring. He's able to hit the Cody Cutter. And then he's able to hit the crossroads for the one, two, three victory. But you can see in the background, and they show a replay, Austin Theory's on the table. He could have been got up, but he's just like stretching his hand like, like, oh, no. But he never got up. So they're definitely planning something with these guys. It may be a situation where they may end up breaking up and they may end up having a feud. We'll see how that plays out. But there was like nine minutes left on the show. So you knew there was going to be some BS. And then that's when Paul Heyman comes out there with three JAGs. Uh, apparently, they were supposed to be uh, off-duty cops that were suspended. Don't know what the fuck's going on with that. But there was three JAGs out there with Paul Heyman. Cody gets a microphone, gets a steel chair, and he's just ready to go. He's like, bro, I, don't, I know who you are, Paul. If you're trying to jump me, if the bloodline's trying to jump me, I'm going to handle y'all. I'm ready for it. What's up? So they, he, Paul Haven talking his trash. And basically what it was, The Rock and Roman wanted Cody to stop mentioning The Rock. Don't, you know, the fact that he even issued a challenge to The Rock, they felt like it was disrespectful. He needs to keep his name out his mouth. And I love what Cody said here. He said, you know what? I, I really don't give a damn about all this. I have been nice. I've been trying to be nice. The only reason why I haven't trashed him publicly is because we all grew up as the Rocks, as the Rocks fans. Like we all grew up as a fan of his. So that's the only reason why I haven't been trashing him publicly. But you know what? I'm done being nice. I'm over this. I'm done with this. So Cody's like, well, if you don't stop, then there will be consequences. There's going to be some problems. And Cody sat in the chair and was like, all right, what you going to do then? So they get into the ring. Uh, the uh, JAG police officers, <laughs> they get into the ring. And Paul's trying to get into the ring, but he keeps telling him, no, don't get your ass in this ring. And they're trying to get closer. And Cody basically says, one more person makes one more step towards me. I'm dropping everybody in this ring. Paul's like, well, I don't think you're talking about me, right? And Paul tries to step into the ring, and Cody goes to work, picks up the chair. Paul Heyman skedaddles, and he starts beating these JAGs up like he should. Start beating them up. So you get, you know, you get the shot of uh, Paul after all the JAGs got dispatched thoroughly with the steel chair and the crossroads and punches and everything love to see it cody getting aggressive or whatnot he cody picks up the mic and he says it very clear and simple the bloodline thinks they're hunting me when in all reality i'm hunting the bloodline i love that i was like finally cody shows some much needed aggression. He said the bloodline thinks they're hunting me when in actuality, I'm hunting the bloodline. There we go. This is what we need more of. He needs to have this intensity because he's going against a crazy amount of odds in The Rock, Roman, Solo, and Jimmy, and Paul. He needs this aggression. I love it. And then you see... Paul pick up the phone, call Roman, and then he picks up another phone with the Rock's logo on it, the Brahma Bull on it, and, and he says, call the Rock. So he has a phone for Roman now, and he has the phone for the Rock. I love it. This is great. This is great. This is what I, um, I'm looking forward to the most story-wise. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? How is this going to play out? And I, I really don't have a concrete idea. And that's what makes this great. So they need to continue this. Keep this going. I would love for Cody to be out there on my, on SmackDown. I can see a situation where the Rock's like, I'm not. Cody's beneath me. I'm not wrestling Cody. What I need to wrestle him for? All I need to do is make sure he's not. he doesn't walk out of WrestleMania as champion. And you can have a situation when Cody's at the top of the ramp and he makes it very simple. He goats the rocket to it. 
he goats him into it. He's like, you know what? You don't want to face me at WrestleMania or wherever they're supposed to have this match. You don't want to face me. I get it. I understand. I get that now. Ladies and gentlemen, The Rock can't go in the ring like he wants to. To be honest with you, The Rock is not as good as he once was. When's the last time you had a full match? What happened when you had that full match? You got hurt. Not once, but twice. Bring some realism to the story. Let's face it, y'all. The only reason why he wanted to face Roman, because at the end of the day, he looks at Roman as an easy challenge because he knows who really the person that's at the top, the head of the table, it's not even Roman. It's himself. So Roman, if I was you, I would drop him because I don't think you understand. The Rock doesn't look at you as an equal. He looks at you as someone less than. That's why he wanted to face you. He doesn't want to face me because he know I can wrestle circles around him. And you don't want to face me without your, the, your family's help because you knew I had you beat. That's what we need. We need Cody to start calling them out on their bullshit. Go the Rock into facing him and we get a match. It'll most likely be at WrestleMania night one, but do it. I hope they do something like that. You need to have Cody really interact with the Rock and the Bloodline and letting them know it. Start telling them off. I'm not afraid of you guys. I have a game plan for you guys, and you're all going to pay for it one way or another. So comment down below. Let me know, did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? What was your favorite part of the show? And where do you guys think the story is going to go with with the whole Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins? Do you think Drew's going to win at WrestleMania? Do you think Seth's going to retain? Also, do where do you guys think this potential match between um, uh, The Rock and Cody, where does that happen? Does it happen on night one? Does it happen on night two? Does it happen before then? Let me know how y'all feel about these storylines progressing, but I appreciate all love support. Road to if you get it. I'm still young, speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.